Hey, it's me, Yona, from Field Teen Center. And today, I want to talk about making really cool, durable masks for your Halloween costumes out of really cheap, easy to find supplies, like cardboard. I made this bird mask out of cardboard, paint, a little bit of tape, and a lot of fake feathers back in 2016. And obviously, still doing okay. This year, I've got a different costume in mind, and I wanna make a parrot. So I'll show you step-by-step step how I build it, and keep in mind that the techniques and ideas that I put into practice today are things you could use for making any kind of mask that you want. So if you're trying to dress up as a cat or a fox, you could still make your own tweaks and make your own design, or you could copy what I make today and have your own parrot. The first thing I'll need for this project is some cardboard. I'm using this cereal box, partly because it's what I have, and partly because it's really thin, so that means it's gonna be easy to cut and easy to shape. And if I use the inside where there's no color, it'll be really easy to paint. So speaking of, I'll also need some paints. I'll be using acrylic paint, partly because it's cheap, I already have it, and because it dries hard. Acrylic paint is basically just plastic, so it'll help reinforce my mask a little bit. And of course, I'll also need some paint brushes. I'll also be using scissors to cut my cardboard, though you could use a box cutter. Just please never ever cut towards yourself, be very careful. I'll also be using masking tape and glue or Mod Podge. I'll also need something to attach my mask. You could use string or an elastic band and some staples. Last but not least, I'll need to decorate my mask and add some texture. So in addition to paint, I'm gonna be using some colored paper as my alternative to feathers because I don't have any and also because they're a little bit harder to glue and paper is really easy to glue to paper. So let's get started. First, I'm going to cut open my cardboard box from the corner so that I can lay it flat. I cut it into two sections to make it easier to work with and then I folded one of them in half because I want my mask to be symmetrical. I didn't use any kind of special template, I just drew a shape that looked like a mask to me. Then I folded my cardboard in half and cut through both layers at the same time so when I opened them I had this nice mask shape. Because my cardboard was very thin, I was able to cut through the eye hole by poking a hole with the scissors. You might need to try something different if you're using thicker cardboard and again please be careful. Once my first eye hole was cut out, I was able to fold it in half and trace to get the same shape for the other eye so they would match. And then I cut the second one the same way I did the first eye. Next, my parrot needs a beak, so I folded another piece of my cardboard in half and cut some triangular shapes from it. I tried a couple different ones so I could try them out and see which one I liked best. After that, it's time to tape the beak in place. I used a lot of tape because masking tape isn't super strong, but it is easy to paint on top of. So my strategy was to start with a few small pieces and then layer on more, trying to put the pieces in opposite directions. So one horizontal and then maybe a vertical one on top of it. And I just used as much tape as I felt like I needed to make it feel stable and sturdy. Next, I grabbed my reference image and started painting. I know that I'm going to be layering some paper feathers on top of this, but there might be gaps in between, and honestly, I don't think I want to cut that many feathers because it's a lot of work, so I want to make sure I cover the entire area so that any gaps will be the right colors. If your paint is very thin or if you're painting on a side of the cardboard that has an image on it, you might need two or more layers. I probably could have left it just like this, but I'm extra and I wanted feathers. But first... There's no point in a mask if it doesn't stay on your face. So I punched some holes in the sides. I used this special hole punching tool at first, but I actually realized my holes were too small and used the tip of a pencil to make them wider. So that's definitely the tool I recommend. Uh, and I just wanted the holes to be wide enough to fit my string through. Once I pushed it through using the pencil to kind of help me push it along a little bit, I just tied a knot on the front and I also cut off any little extra bits of string that I didn't want to be dangling and visible. Then I repeated these steps on the other side. Next, I cut a bunch of different shapes for my feathers. Because parrots have short feathers and long feathers, I made sure to cut some short and long pieces of paper. And then I covered the back of my paper really well with glue 
and stuck it to my mask. You can stick it on top of your paint or behind like I did here or a combination of both. The more layers you add on, the more textural and feathery it will look, but there's really no limit. You can add as many or as few as you like. And this is what my finished parrot mask looks like when it is all finished and on my face. So I would love to hear from you guys. Have you ever made a mask or Halloween costume? Are you dressing up this year? Are you going to make some or all of your costume? You can get in touch with us by DMing us on Instagram, emailing us, or of course, visiting us in person at Field Teen Center. We are on the ground floor of Parkway Central Library at 1901 Vine Street, and we're open Monday through Friday from 1 to 5 p.m. These hours can change from time to time, so for the most up-to-date information and any special events or programs, be sure to follow us on social media and check our website. Thanks so much for watching. Good luck with any costumes you might be putting together this year, and I hope you find something great to read.